what do you see? The Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower, guys. It's right in front of us, right here. Wow, this is beautiful. Here's another angle of the cathedral and right alongside the riverbank, all kinds of local art being sold, souvenirs. What is this guy pulling up over here? Oh, are these, these are crepes. Oh man, the crepe guys just showed up. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another beautiful day here in Los Angeles. You guys can't see that right now because I'm actually inside of the airport. I'm in LAX right now. It's actually incredibly early. It's 8 a.m. right now. Um, I've been up since about five. Got my luggage handy right here. I'm actually with my brother right now. This here is Andrew. For those of you guys who don't recognize him off of the um, previous videos that he was on recently, he was actually with me in Mexico on my most recent ones and at the LA County Fair. I believe that was the last video that he came out in. But Andrew is actually gonna be joining me for the next few months um, on, the, on the travels here on the channel and I'm really excited about it because, well, it's his first time leaving leaving home for more than like a short a short trip, yeah. so it's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be a good. Um, longer than two weeks. Longer than two weeks, and right now we're we're gonna be gone. Well, on this leg of this journey, about a month and a half, so it's a big one. Now, um, the reason why I'm starting the vlog right now is because I was actually contemplating even filming this day. I'm super exhausted. I got very little sleep last night, but we're gonna make it happen. Right now, we're actually on our way to New York. We have a small layover, then heading to Paris. Then we're gonna be flying over to, where are we going? Tunisia. Tunisia, we're heading to Africa. So uh, that's the reason why we're actually um, heading to uh, New York and to Paris is because that was the only way for us to actually get to Tunisia without doing a layover of like um, 24 hours in I believe it was Frankfurt, Germany. So that's what we're doing. That's uh, the plan. Join me for a nice little epic travel day. And we're flying Alaska Airlines for the first leg. Not not a bad way to start any, any travel journey. Alaska Airlines, American Delta, my go-to. And I also do wanna let you guys know that this video is gonna be sponsored by Level 8, which is this awesome luggage company that I'm actually uh, using. I've been using them for several weeks now. And let me just tell you guys, I haven't been disappointed. I'll actually tell you guys a lot more about them though. Once we make it to New York, because we got a five hour layover and I feel like we can make um, some great use of the time talking to you guys a little bit about level eight and why their luggage is so special. All right, enough jabber, let's get on this play. All right, well that flight was incredibly smooth. Slept for about a whole hour, watched a couple movies, and now we're here in New York now. I actually have a little surprise to share with you guys here in a minute, but um, I'm actually gonna wait for my brother to come on out and we have a five hour layover here. So we got a five hour layover oops, before our next big flight. I'm dropping everything today, I'm a mess. But yeah, we got a five hour layover before our next big flight to Europe. That one's about seven hours. So let's see if we can get something to eat. And I'm not too sure if we actually gotta go through security to be able to go through um, the in through to the international transfer section. All right, where's Andrew? There he is, right there. So you know what, let me actually walk a little bit further for you guys and then I'll tell you the surprise. So we're actually heading to Tunisia, that wasn't a lie. But my brother thinks that we only have a two hour layover in Paris, when in fact, we're gonna be spending a few days there to actually do some exploring and for him to see it for the first time. So I'm excited about that one. All right, where's he at? How was that one? Long, Long but easy, right? Easy. First time in New York and you don't even get to experience the city. Shame on you. Sad. You gotta come back. And he's also going to Paris and guess what? I also don't get to experience that either. Same, <laughs> amount of place. same amount of same amount of time, same amount of place, same layover, same amount of place, same amount of time, same same amount of layover. But still, not experiencing anything. Oh man, it smells good out here. Hopefully there's a lot more food options here in Newark. Firehouse subs some fish seafood all right i'm excited for this layover the usually those long direct flights from la to europe can be brutal so it's nice to get off and 
stretch the legs a little bit. Who knows? Maybe have a brewski? Maybe. Maybe have a brew? My brother turned 21 this week, so could be could be time for some legal beers. Not like we haven't had them already, of course, but um, another set here at the airport in New York. Why not? Now, as I told you guys, this video is sponsored by Level 8 Luggage. So right now, before we actually check into our flight uh, for Paris that's leaving in a few hours, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the luggage that I'm using. So this here is actually their carry-on, and this here is um, one of their specialized bags because this here is actually, well, a laptop and electronic, electronic compartment as well. It has two slots, a laptop pouch, and what I love most about this um, clip where the laptop actually um, secures itself to is that it actually has a combination TSA pre-approved lock as well as a power bank. Now the zippers actually um, all lock as well right at the top of the bag so you don't actually have to purchase any um, third party locks or yeah, worry about losing keys, any of that thing. And now I also have a big trunk suitcase, which I'm actually traveling with right now as well. And let me just tell you guys, this suitcase is so spacious. I was literally able to pack not only all of my belongings in there, but also Andrew's. So these here have been an absolute lifesaver. They wheel around incredibly smooth. Look, you can have a little, a little cheap suitcase like Andrew's that doesn't really roll around all that smooth. All right. I'm just talking bad about his suitcase now, but you can have a level eight that does 360s and can literally go on mud, snow, and rain. I'm just kidding. I'm not too sure about that, but they're good bags. Definitely. If you guys want to help support the channel, if you're looking for some good luggage, if you're heading on that dream vacation soon, you don't want to go without a level eight suitcase. I'll leave you a link down below where you can save some money. And of course, I also receive a small little kickback from each purchase as well. So let's knock out two birds with one stone. Let's get you guys some new luggage and of course, some savings. All right, so we found the lunch spot. This here is a smash burger. And I guess this is like a chain on this side of the United States. I actually haven't never tried it before, but let's go ahead and unwrap this bad boy. And dude, let me know down in the comment section, guys. Oh, this is bacon. This one's yours. Hey, they look like some nice burgers, though. Yeah, nice smash burgers. Now, dude, let me know if you guys want to see a series from the East Coast of the United States. I definitely want to get on out here and film for you guys. I filmed a big series for you, um, what was it, probably three years ago before the channel started getting some momentum over on this side of the country, and I actually never published all of the videos because they just simply weren't getting views, and I was like a bit unmotivated. However, um, I would like to come back now now that you know we have grown bigger and come and document this side of the United States very well for you guys because this place is awesome and there's so many different um, things that make this side of the country unique to include even it's uh, fast food chains which is pretty pretty interesting so yeah smash burger we're about to try this out for the first time but first pickles off yeah we don't need any of those around all right um, we're gonna chow down through our dinner and then we'll go right back through security and make our way to the gate. So we managed to get checked in, no line. We were the first ones there. So I guess that is a huge plus, but now we got three hours to kill in the airport. So I'm not gonna bore you guys too much with all kinds of content from the Newark airport. I'll just see you guys once we start boarding the plane and making our way to Paris. Now, I'm super excited. I'm a little bit tired. I have a feeling that it's really going to hit me once we land in Paris because right now we're still uh, three hours behind in LA time. So um, it's still quite early back at home where we left, probably around 4 p.m. So I have a feeling that, yeah, the whole travel day isn't going to catch up to me until we land in Paris. How are you holding up? I'm tired as hell, man. You're tired, huh? Andrew's not used to these long travel days and this one right here, this one right here isn't even too bad. This is like a mellow travel day. We got a nice little five hour layover and then another little layover in uh, in um, Paris. And um, yeah, usually I get on some flights that have like 13, 14, 15 hour layovers and those suck. So yeah, it could be worse, but um, I'll see you guys on the plane.
right, so we made it off the flight. It was an absolute breeze. Literally lasted five hours and 46 minutes. So less than six hours to make it here from New York City. Right now we're in line for immigration. It's actually quite long. I'm gonna put the camera down now because, well, I don't wanna get caught talking into the GoPro or into the DJI while we're waiting for immigration. But yeah, this airport, everything has gone by extremely smooth. Andrew's a little bit tired, but what did you see from the window? The Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower. Now, he's a little bit salty because we can't actually go out there and uh, make it to see the Eiffel Tower just yet. However, um, be there soon. Be there soon? How soon? Do you tell me when you book in that flight, buddy? <laughs> His dream is to see the Eiffel Tower. All right. Um, well, buddy, we're about to go see her right now as soon as we get done with immigration. Yeah, we are. Guess what I did? I booked this a few nights in Paris. Nah. For reals. Nah. <laughs> so he thought we were boarding another flight right now. We're not boarding another flight right now. We're about to spend some days in Paris. Nah. Yeah, okay. For reals, 100%. Nah, that's lit. That's good. I'm, I'm about to take you to the Eiffel right? Tower right now. As soon as we get done with this. Let's get it. Let's get it. That sounds lit. So immigration security was a breeze now. Let's hope that the bag made it because we actually had to check the bag all the way straight through to Paris from Los Angeles. But yeah, I had to spoil the, the surprise right before getting to immigration because everybody knows when you get to immigration, the questions start coming. How long are you here? What are you doing here? Why did you come to Paris? Like it's not the most visited city in the world. And yes, guys, so here, surprise, we surprise. It. We're in Paris. How do you feel? Do you feel better knowing that we're not going on another on another flight right away? I do. I was I was really regretting it. It was, was going to be a long flight. It was going to be a long one, huh? It was, it was the shortest flight, but it was going to feel the longest because it's already been a 24-hour travel day. So imagine with just another hour. It's going to be good. It, it was going to be long, but now it's it's going to be good. We're going to go home, shower. Let's go eat a croissant, drink a coffee, go see the Eiffel Tower. Croissant. Croissant. How you say it? Cross. A croissant. croissant. I'm not sure exactly how to say it, but hey, we're here. I'm excited. Let's see if the baggage made it. Oh, and they got free cards. Nice. Now, you know, they actually have a bus that leaves from Orly all the way down to the city center. However, I'm actually going to be taking an Uber today because the Uber I just read online is $30 um, to get us down there. And the buses charge 11 euro 20 per person. And right now we got a lot of, you know, expensive belongings, things like that. So. We're just gonna jump on into the Uber and head straight straight to the room. All right, still no luck on the bags. Man, this is the nerve wracking part here. All right, let's hope it arrives. Oh, you know what? I actually see a sign up there. It says carousel number three, but this here is four, this here is three, and there's nothing. All right, well, let me find the bags. Let me get the bag situation sorted, and I'll catch up with you guys once we um, order this. Once we order this Uber. All right, she made it, and with very little scratches too. That's what I like to see. So glad you made it. I was worried about you. So earlier, I talked to you guys a little bit about the carry-on, but this here is the trunk level eight suitcase. Look how amazing this is and super spacious. Yeah, it did get a little dinged up. I should have bought a. a like protective cover for my suitcase but yeah i'm one of those people that i don't learn to take care of my things until they get damaged until i gotta buy it again so yeah for now it's gonna have to do with the little boo-boos but you know what it's cool because it made it it made it in one piece i'd much rather have it here all scratched up than um yeah not have it here <laughs> so bathroom and then we'll make our way down to the city center but yeah, I love the organization here at this airport. I mean, everything's super clean, super organized. Wow, this looks like a cool job. Imagine just whipping this thing around the airport all day long. All right, see you guys in a few. literally took 30 minutes I was falling asleep in the back of the car though and my stomach was starting to hurt I really need some food now we're actually staying in the same area I stayed with Gladys I actually stayed in this building with Gladys last winter and I really love this area this is the Latin Quarter so of course I had to come back here this time with Andrew now 
the streets are actually a lot more active than it was during the winter time i'm excited to be here right now no sweater weather uh this time around so yeah let's see where we sit down and have ourselves a nice little um nice little lunch because obviously i want to have a nice dinner near the eiffel tower later on tonight but yeah there's all kinds of bakeries small little restaurants to choose from let me know down in the comment section have you guys ever been to paris before or is this a city that's on your bucket list it is definitely worth the visit you know i've been here four times and my first trip it was never it wasn't the most exciting time but i must say every other time that i've come after the first time has been super super enjoyable especially when you come with somebody that you that you care about that you love it's great so right behind me is actually plaza saint michael now this is actually one of the most iconic plazas in the city and we're literally staying right here right across the street and over in the other direction is actually the Notre Dame Cathedral. Now, the streets are super active right now. It's very peaceful, relaxing vibes. We actually just got done eating a um, like pizza, some sort of pizza bread thing and also a croissant. I didn't really film that for you guys though because man, I'm exhausted right now. I'm super beat, but I'm about to get freshened up. We'll check in right now. I'll show you guys the room. I'll take a quick shower. And then we'll start exploring this beautiful city. I mean, look at this place. I didn't think I was going to come out here and make a bunch of videos, but I think I'm actually going to make quite a few. I mean, look at the vibes. Let's have some brews after we check in. This little spot looks nice. Irish pub. You can always count on an Irish pub everywhere in the world. Actually, is there any Irish people watching my videos right now? I haven't seen any comments from Ireland in a few months. Let me know if you guys are are here in this chat right now because it'd be awesome to see if i have you know followers from out there and wow look during the winter time all of these uh concession stands were closed but now they're fully open maybe i'll make a video doing some shopping along the riverbed here in paris who knows oh man great great vibes out here what is this some little japanese restaurants man so many um trendy little restaurants and places to just sit down and have coffees my kind of city. How are you? Fine. Wow, such a beautiful area. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? Fine. Sorry, but I don't speak English. Please. No français. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. So this here is our room, guys. This here is our tiny little shack that we're going to be calling home for the next few days now. The area is super beautiful. And the room is as well. However, I must say, based off the pictures off of Airbnb, this looks nothing like it. However, this was $250 a night here in Paris. We got a barely queen size bed. I don't know. It looks almost like a full. It's going to be hard to fit two of us in here, but we're in Paris. We're making it happen. This isn't the cheapest city. If you're looking to come to Paris, expect to spend roughly $200 to $250 a night. The hotel I stayed at last time right in front of the fountain it's called Hotel Clooney Square, but this week, for some reason, they wanted $4.50 a night. Insane, but the room itself is beautiful. We got a lamp, nice little nightstand, a full mirror, television, some storage up here, which my short ass can't reach. But if you have some inches um, to spare, like my brother, then these storage is no problem. <laughs> then we also have like a nice little rack behind the door telephone over here a little kitchen area we got a stove sink fully stocked uh kitchen area which i can't imagine cooking in here your pillow would probably smell like the fettuccine you're cooking um we got like a nice little place to put the dishes coffee maker microwave yeah cups all the necessities then in here we have the bathroom and the bathroom is actually really cozy we got a mirror sink shower it came with shampoo conditioner everything toilet and yeah that's about how big our room is now what i really like about the room though is that you can tell um well where they tried to modernize it with the modern wall this here is that old um remnants of these old buildings that actually can't be modified here in Europe. Anytime you're staying in a historic city center in Europe, any building, any restaurant, cafe, they have to um, build around the construction that already exists. You can't modify these buildings. So super cool to see. Very beautiful. 
We just took a shower. Ready to explore Paris? Yes, sir. Let's get it. The first stop for today is, of course, the Notre Dame Cathedral. This is by far one of the most iconic locations in the city after, of course, the Louvre and the Eiffel Tower. But it is a must visit when in Paris. Now, right off the bat, I can already tell so much has changed in the last few months. They just built these like uh, stadium bleachers where you can actually sit down and admire the cathedral. There's all kinds of vendors out here taking photos, selling crepes, souvenirs all kinds of people sitting around. In the winter, you definitely didn't see this. So if you want to experience Paris in its full, you have to come in the warmer months. During the winter, it's a vibe, it's completely different. But right now, man, it's active. The energy on the streets is uh, pretty impressive. And I must say, I feel kind of bad for bringing uh, Gladys here in the dead set winter, because right now it feels, it feels amazing out here. Now, what are your first impressions of Paris so far? Um, it's nice. It's nice. It's, it's a little something I've never seen before, but it doesn't seem too different. I've been to, I mean, it's probably not going to sound like, but I've been to Mexico City and it kind of reminds me of Mexico City. Yeah, because bit. you know why though? Because Mexico City has that same Spanish architecture. It has like that, um, that real European influence and so does Colombia where we yeah. went. Bogota has a real Spanish They're colonial influence like as well. Buildings. Exactly. Same, same sort of architecture. But as far as, um, the energy on the street, the movement, does it, it, it does it feel a lot different than Latin America in the US? Mm, yeah, it feels a little different. Not as many people talk to you over there and like the Latin America, everybody's saying hi, how you doing, trying to talk to you, trying to sell you stuff over here. It's just everybody's staying to themselves. Everybody's just living life. Yeah. Getting croissants by themselves. Getting croissants, drinking coffee, looking at cathedral sightseeing. But yeah, great observation by Andrew so far though, definitely. Here in Europe, people aren't gonna just come up to you and try and talk to you and um, see how your day's going. That's definitely Latin American culture. In Latin America, people are constantly like, Hola, como estas? De donde eres? Why are you here? And then they'll try and sell you some shit. Here, they just won't even talk to you. Here's another angle of the cathedral and right alongside the riverbank, all kinds of local art being sold, souvenirs. What is this guy pulling up over here? Oh, are these, these are crepes. Oh man, the crepe guys just showed up. I love how it's attached to a bicycle. And every time I see a nice Nutella and some bananas, it's calling my name. However, I'm a bit full from the Paul place. Um, we'll grab some crepes later on. Well, we are making our way down towards the Eiffel Tower. We're actually right next to the Louvre right now. We're gonna see if we can uh, get some tickets to come and visit the Mona Lisa. That way Andrew can see the Mona Lisa by the time we get on out of here. But we just stumbled across some sort of parade or something. I saw this police officer stop right here. And now I see all kinds of like horses and stuff coming down the road. So let's actually stop right here and um, see what's going on. Hello, sir. Parade? So I'm not sure what the parade is for, but it looks pretty damn cool. All right, it's approaching now. Oh man, Andrew's getting the first uh, the whole Paris experience, and you guys keep seeing him yawn, but that's I'm because- I'm tired, I've been on a 24 hour flight trip right now. And, and we're still on out here, so it's not because he's bored, it's because, man, we're exhausted, we're smoked, but Paris it is, it's a vibe. Hello. All right. Oh man, these are beautiful. Wow, I wasn't expecting to see this today. That's cool, huh? Man, their outfits are, are spot on. They're so shiny, so much gold. They got instruments, all kinds of medals hanging off of their uniforms. Look at these swords. And the horses also look incredibly beautiful as well. Wow, this is beautiful. After watching the horses pass by, we stopped by at the Louvre to take the famous little um, pictures holding up the pyramid. And we might actually come by and visit the Mona Lisa um, tomorrow. I think I mentioned that earlier today or earlier in this video. I get sidetracked a little bit. 
uh, very distracted in places like this. I mean, there's so much to look at, so much to do, so much to see. Look at all the people that I just lose my train of thoughts. But one thing I find fascinating about Europe is that every time they're doing construction, they put up like these um, silhouettes, I guess you could call them, that shows what the monuments look like even while they're in construction. You can see it all the way around and it kind of blows my mind because I wonder how expensive is it to make uh, these sheets of cloth that um, portray what the monument looks like that is actually under construction. It's quite crazy. That just goes to show you how much money is here in Paris and how important the tourism industry is because all of those sites um, are fully protected even under construction. This is actually the Arc that is right next to us right now. And if you can see right directly in front of us is the Eiffel Tower and we're actually about to make our way down to the Arc de Triomphe because the Arc de Triomphe is by far one of the most iconic places that Andrew wanted to visit today. Yeah. The Arc and the Eiffel, right? Yeah. You've seen it in all the movies? So you can probably see it directly in front of us, right? Like way down there. All right, let's make our way over there because it's quite interesting. The Arc de Triomphe is a very historical place here in Paris and it's actually a site where um, many things have happened, but one of the most iconic by far are when the Nazis actually stormed Paris. There's a famous picture of Hitler and all of the Nazis around the Arc de Triomphe. So it's pretty cool. All right, here in this little area, there's all kinds of vendors selling hats, all kinds of, um, yeah, chestnuts, souvenirs, waters. Maybe we'll come down here and do a, a shopping video later on this week. This looks like a nice little interesting walkway. <laughs> they sell a little bit of everything. They even have little outlets for you if you forget your... The converter. Yeah, the converter. Yeah, if you forget your converter, they got you covered here. But yeah, look, all kinds of um, different street artists. They even sell like little Eiffel Tower statues, pictures, and even if you're not into shopping, there's plenty of green places to sit around and hang out. I mean, Paris is just a vibe. It is a vibe. Now, I was mentioning this earlier, but my first trip to Paris, I wasn't that blown away by it because, well, to be honest with you guys, I came here with my best friend. We got drunk as hell. The whole three days we were here, went on pub crawls, we're partying with people at the hostels. But I didn't actually like take the time to, you know, walk around and experience all of this. And I think if you come here for those reasons to come around, walk around, sightsee and embrace all of this that you see around you, you're gonna have an amazing time here in Paris. If you come here and, you know, just go and have some good nights out, um, not really pay attention to the architecture or the history, you're still gonna have an awesome time, but you're gonna take a lot less um, of Paris with you when you actually leave and chances are you'll be one of those people telling everybody else oh paris is nice but i've been to better places and don't be that person because paris is awesome <laughs> That was a nice little walk, very enjoyable walking through that park. Now, we're right where Avenue Champs Elysees actually starts. I hope I pronounced that right. It's right um, on the other side of this plaza where there's actually a big, yeah, I don't know, like setup for an event taking place, Rugby World Cup France 2023. So this here usually isn't um, present, but right now it is. We're actually gonna walk around it and hit the Avenue Champs. Um, Elysees is actually one of the most expensive uh, designer shopping streets in the world and it's also one of the most beautiful shopping districts in the world in my opinion now Andrew this is your first time actually getting a glance at that much of the Eiffel Tower how how big is it um, in person would you say pretty big pretty big does it look big. does it look smaller in person or bigger in person than what you expected well, it's about the same size as I would expect it to be yeah big. all right it's not crazy huge, huh? All right. Well, I like Andrew's honest opinion because when I first got here, my very first time ever seeing the Eiffel Tower, to be honest with you guys, I thought it was a lot smaller than what I imagined it would be. I thought it was like very small compared to like all of the pictures that I had seen before. But I guess you are right. 
in the pictures they always make it look bigger. Yeah, in the pictures it always makes it look bigger, but it still is pretty damn huge. I mean, it's massive. But yeah, um, so Andrew's first impressions, Eiffel Tower didn't disappoint. See, that's what I'm saying. You can't take everybody's advice. You got to take everybody's advice with a grain of salt because my first time coming to the Eiffel Tower, I was like, oh, it's not that impressive, but it is. It's an impressive piece of architecture. Okay, so all this um, rugby stuff is actually making sense. That could be why everything was stupid expensive. It says that this is actually going to take place this upcoming weekend. So that could be why we spent $250 to be in a closet. In a closet. <laughs> that makes sense though. We're on the main boulevard of Champs Elysees right now. And let me just tell you guys, it is gorgeous out here. Now I'm not sure why. There's a big English flag and French flags everywhere. Everywhere I look, there's English flags. Um, I wish I knew exactly why that was. I'm sure a quick Google uh, search would answer that question. However, I have no data because I'm only here for two and a half days. Um, I decided not to buy a SIM card. So yeah, this here is what Champs Elysees looks like. Now at night, all of these trees light up. It looks super beautiful out here. And directly in front of us is actually the Arc de Triomphe. So we're gonna make our way over that way now. Wow, this looks interesting. I mean, so many different like interesting um, statues, art pieces to look at here in the city. I'm not sure exactly what the purpose of this one is, but I mean, it's cool. You got water squirting down these pipes and it's just rotating. I mean, everybody walks by and does what Andrew does. Just Damn. stare at it. And no one knows exactly why you stare at it, but you do. So, the city did a good job by putting these here. All right, let's explore um, Champs Elysis a little bit. Now, right now it is 5.30 in the afternoon, but man, it is beautiful out. It is um, quite hot, a little bit on the warmer sides of things. You would think it'd start cooling down because it is getting later on, but no, not here in Paris right now. It is perfect out. And I'm also noticing that there are a lot of tourists compared to when you come here in the winter time. And the winter time is definitely a lot slower. All right, let's try and not get ran over by a bike. You don't want to get ran over by a bike. Well, uh, we've already found how many accidents? Two. Two accidents since we've been in Paris in four hours. One guy, while we were eating our bakery items earlier today, um, this flew right off the bike. Flew right off the bike. This lady hit him and he flew right off the bicycle, but like launched him. And then right now, um, another car crashed into a, a DHL truck. So, yeah, driving in Paris, renting a car in Paris is probably not the best idea if you are planning on coming on out here. There's also really good public transportation here in the city, just like most other European cities. So, buses, Uber, taxis, things like that, trains, they all work pretty well here. But yeah, if any of you guys know why the English flag is up right now, please let me know. But yeah, here on this street, this is where you're going to find all your big name brands. Adidas, you're going to find Louis Vuitton, the Dior store, the Gucci. Everything here on this street. Nike outlets, as well as many restaurants, cafes, bars. Places like that to just lounge around and people watch. And it's quite awesome too, walking down these streets. It almost reminds me of New York City. You're walking down the streets and you just hear so many different languages popping up from every corner. The whole world is here in Paris, and it's very nice to see. But yeah, as you're walking around Paris too, one thing you will not, one thing you will, you will notice right away, is that. Let me see if Andrew actually notices. Were you have you noticed how many um, advertisements you're being hit with as you're walking around? Like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Dior. It's all those big name brands too. You don't see no Nike advertisement. It's like, come buy this new Dior bag, this new Louis bag. And I mean, I guess you can see why. I mean, people from all over the world come here to buy those um, designer name brands. I mean, most of them are from from here in Paris, so it's pretty cool to see. But yeah, look, not only locals waiting for the bus, but also tourists. It's very uh, convenient and easy to use to get around. All right, well, this is what Champs Elysees looks like. I'm not gonna continue on too much more because, well, then I'll just bore you showing you guys all these streets. But right now, I'm gonna sit down, grab myself a drink. Oh man, I smell some green. I smell some green out here in Paris. But I'm gonna sit down right now, have a beer, um, enjoy the vibes, people watch a little bit, then we'll make our way down to the Arc because we have to get over to the tower before it gets dark. That way Andrew can see the tower both during the day and at night. Because at night, for those of you guys who don't know, the Eiffel Tower does something very 
very special. Just got done walking the Champs Elysees and we made it to the Arc de Triomphe, but I'm a bit disappointed. We actually can't access it right now because of the whole rugby thing. There's a lot of construction Put going on. Look, like they're putting up billboards that way. Um, all kinds of other um, tiles and yeah, flooring it looks like. But yeah, there's a lot of people here and everybody comes to, well, of course, admire this incredible arc, which um, has so much history. Or which holds so much history, I should say, but better yet. I also noticed that there's a huge France flag in the middle as well. That's usually not there, but yeah, a lot of construction going on. Still incredibly beautiful. So yeah, this is basically what people do. You come, you look at the arc, you take some pictures, and you leave. Now there are some people that actually uh, go to the top of it. You can actually go to the top of it via like an elevator, I believe. Um, however, I've actually never done that, but definitely gonna be doing that next time. But yeah, the clouds are moving incredibly fast. I don't know if you guys can see that, but. Oh yeah, there is somebody up there, huh? Up there at the very top, taking a picture. All right, well, you know what? We've had an, event, an eventful day here in um, Paris so far, but there still is one thing and one iconic thing that must be done. And what is that? We got to see the Eiffel Tower. So that's where we're going to head to now. Um, I'll probably walk around, take my brother a couple pictures with the Ark, and then we'll be taking off to the tower. Now, the tower is about a 25-minute walk, so I think I'm actually going to hop on a bus for that one because I am pretty damn tired right now. We were actually on our way down to the Eiffel Tower, and we saw this beautiful little restaurant slash bar with tables outside, and we decided, why not? Let's sit and let the sun go down a little bit more. I actually just ordered myself a lemon cello spritz. Cheers, bro. Cheers. I've never ordered an Aperol spritz before, and there's a bunch of guys drinking some right now, but the bartender came up to me, and I was like, hey, um, do you recommend the Aperol spritz? And he's like, yeah, if you're a chick, like, I wouldn't drink it. <laughs> so I was like, okay, what do you drink? And he's like, lemon cello spritz. Don't know if that's much better of an option, no, but, but... To be honest, it is pretty good. It tastes like a, it tastes like a lemon juice. Like a lemon juice, like a lemon right? juice with a hint of... I don't know what it is, tequila or vodka, I'm not sure, but okay. it's pretty good. All right, we're gonna try this right now. So yeah, cheers. Um, after this, we'll be heading to the Eiffel Tower. Oh, man, I'm so hungry, I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh. I'm hungry, tired, excited, They're like fine. a mix of emotions. It might be a champagne. I think it's Prosecco. What's Prosecco? Champagne, right? Champagne. Or wine? Shit, I don't know. It's my first day out here in Paris. Oh. It's gross, huh? It tastes like a lemon zest. To be fair, it's pretty gross. Oh. Yeah, I can't believe he eat, he drinks these. All right, I'm gonna smash through this, and let's make it to the Eiffel Tower. Whoa. Hey, for 10 euro though, not bad if it hits, huh? If it hits. If it hits, it hits. It hits, man. <laughs> ain't no more, there's ain't much more you're gonna get for 10 euro. <laughs> yeah, true. Ended up spending way too much time at the bar. We met an Australian brother and sister who are actually traveling around Europe and we ended up drinking a few drinks with them. I had myself a couple whiskey sour, some uh, lemon cello spritz. So did Andrew and we're feeling me, good. It got me a little buzz. I was like, I was caught off guard. I usually have a couple of beers, feel a little something, something, but I wasn't even halfway through the through the glass and I was feeling a little, a little messed up. <laughs> so, oh man, right now we're heading our, uh, making our way towards the Eiffel Tower. I actually don't think we're gonna sit around till 9 p.m. when it sparkles because, well, now I'm feeling a little bit buzzed. I'm probably gonna continue that, and um, we'll come and see the sparkle tomorrow, right? Because Andrew's tired. He's gonna tap out on me tonight. I already know, but it's cool. I'm gonna go hang out, have a couple drinks at the Latin Quarter. He's gonna catch up on some sleep, and yeah, this is how we're gonna conclude our first day in Paris. But first, we're making our way to the Eiffel Tower. We're gonna try and make it there. Um, within the next 20 minutes or so. It says 15 minute walk from here. So um, let's hope that's true. And yeah, what a great, what a great first day, huh? It was. I feel like Maybe. we've done so much. Well, it's because we did. We walked the whole city already, bro. Yeah, pretty much, huh? We walked so much. We didn't even take no public transportation yet, but um, it's been good. If you guys good fun. how I'm doing it, this isn't a sponsored deal, but get you a pair of Brooks. Brooks. Brooks is the boom. You need walking shoes, man. I got Air Force Ones on right now, and that is not the move. If you're coming to Paris, you need a nice, comfortable pair of walking shoes. Now, Andrew has also been contemplating starting his own channel. Let me know if you guys would like to see Andrew start his own channel. Yeah, and what? I'm, a little, I'm a little shy, but I think I'm going to get there one day. If you guys show me a little bit of support, I don't know. 
I'm uh, I'm gonna make a video, see what you guys want to see. I think I want to do a little bit of like. What do you want to do? I don't know what I want to do yet. I, there's a lot I want to do, but I'm gonna make a video one of these days, and you guys give me some feedback. So uh, we'll see. So okay, yeah, let's go. see, let's see. But first, what do you see? The Eiffel Tower, guys, it's right in front of us, right here. Hopefully you guys can see it, but it is beautiful, man. All right, let's make our way there. Oh, another selfie? Another selfie for the ground. Mandatory selfie? All right, well, I'm not gonna bore you guys with too much B-roll. I'll see you guys at the Eiffel Tower. Just made it to the base of the Eiffel Tower, and man, the hustle is real down here. They got people selling food, alcohol, drinks. All kinds of good stuff. What are they, what are they selling over here? Some chestnuts, and of course, here is the beautiful Eiffel Tower. Now, all along the sides of this street, you're gonna find people selling souvenirs, kind of like we did over in the area in front of the Louvre. But this street here is actually where I had someone last year tell me that they were gonna propose to their girlfriend right in front of uh, the tower, right here on this street, where you see everybody taking photos. So yeah, definitely a popular location. Look, they got tuk-tuks in Paris. It's a good vibe. All right, Andrew. Now, since we got your opinion from way down there, how do you feel right here? It's a lot bigger than I thought it was. It's a lot bigger, huh? It's a lot bigger. And on the second platform, you can actually see that there's people up there standing around. And if you look up at the very top, there's even people all the way up there. So I'm not too sure. I've never been to the Eiffel. Well, I've been to the Eiffel Tower several times. I've never actually gone up it because I feel like the whole view of Paris is like down here. Like, why are you going to go up to the Eiffel Tower and then look around? But I feel like maybe that could make for a great video. Let me know down in the comment section if you guys want to see me do that because I'd love to make that happen for you guys. The elevator looks pretty intense that goes all the way to the top. Now, there's also these guys here with balloons that lounge around and take photos of you just like this so that you can go home with all your memories and of course down here on the river is actually where you can come on out and jump onto a little tour boat that goes around the river and gives you uh, views of Paris and the Eiffel Tower which I'm actually hoping to do tomorrow evening now there's actually a merry-go-round here a park downstairs so much to do guys but you know what? I think now it's time for me to just enjoy time with my brother here at the Eiffel Tower and really just embrace this moment because, let's be honest, I never, you guys don't know the struggle, but like, I grew up in the hood with my little brother in the same house, same, same family situation, and I don't think I ever thought in my life that I would ever lay my eyes on the Eiffel Tower, let alone with my brother. So, man, it's a dream come true. It's a dream come true. And even though I've been here many times, I brought my mom here. I brought Gladys here. I brought my brother here. Every time is just super special. And I feel like Paris is one of those places that you can show up to from anywhere around the world and just sit back and reflect. Reflect on what a blessing your life is. Because if you're able to travel around the world to see this view, you're blessed. You're blessed. There's not many people out there that can afford to leave their house, um, leave their families, to go out on a leisure vacation, to go out and see one of those bucket list items. But um, if you manage to make it to these places, sit there, reflect for a little bit and think about how blessed you are because not many people in the world get the opportunity to do this. I mean, the fact that I've seen the Eiffel Tower now four different times is unreal and I owe it all to you guys. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for supporting my dreams. Thank you so much for uh, supporting each and every video and for making this a reality. Because of you guys, I'm able to, you know, bring my brother out here. We out here in Paris. We out here in Paris. And you know, a large, re a large reason of why I brought my brother out here was not only because, well, the business is growing and I need help right now at the moment, but also because, guys, it's important to get out of the environment that you're in, right? It's important to get out of the environment you're in, see different places, meet different people, uh, make new experiences, make new life memories, and most importantly, jump on flights thinking you're going to Africa and end up in Paris. I mean, life's great, you know what I'm saying? Life's great. Well, bro, hey, let's switch it up, actually. Uh, I'm fucking so happy that I'm here with you, bro. You, it's a dream come true. It's a dream come true. I'm so happy to explore more more of this world with you. For now, though, guys, I'm gonna let you guys go because 
We need a couple more drinks. Andrew needs some photos because all he has is selfies. And I'll let you guys go with this amazing view of the Eiffel Tower. And who knows, maybe later on this week, I'll make it to the top and I'll film that for you guys. If you see another video from Paris, it's because I made another video from Paris. If you don't, well, I'll see you guys in Tunisia. And the reason why I say that is because we got two days left here and I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do. I might do nothing, I might do something. Later, guys. Bye, y'all. Have a good one. You are always smarter.